Today's edition of the Washington Times is a column titled Kosovo Trainwreck Warnings. And it's written by U.S. Navy retired Admiral James Lyon, and he says it's expected that early on in this new year, probably in February, the United Nations supervised Albanian Muslim administration of the Serbian province of, of Kosovo will make a unilateral declaration of independence from Serbia. And the U.S. has said it's prepared to recognize the move despite objections from the Serbian government or, for that matter, Russia as well. Join us right now to talk more about these impen uh, this impending train wreck, if you will, is Jim Jatras. Uh, James Jatras is director of the American Council for Kosovo. We've had the privilege of having him on a number of occasions to talk about this uh, and other related issues to it. Jim, good to have you back with us. Happy New Year. John, Happy New Year, and thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Well, it's just uh, one of those things that's never seemingly on the uh, front page top of the fold as it ought to be in terms of mainstream media coverage, but this is a critical, critical issue from a number of different perspectives. I, I'm simply stating what you already know far better than I, but for folks who even now don't know what's at stake and why this move should be adamantly opposed, take us to that, uh, take us to that point, if you would. Sure, and the, and the operative ter uh, term here is, in fact, train wreck. As Admiral Lyons pointed out in his column today, as I did in my previous column, the phrase was actually used by Richard Holbrook, uh, formerly Bill Clinton's uh, ambassador to the United Nations who uh, used it in a column in the Washington Post a couple of months ago, but he was urging us to move forward with this train wreck, even knowing it was going to provoke a confrontation uh, of a global proportion with the Russians and probably other as well. Uh, the, the long and the short of it is is that uh, the, trying to detach part of a country's territory without its consent is something that would be horribly destabilizing to every country with a, an ethnic or religious separatist movement, which is actually quite a few of them. And it would be a wreak complete havoc in the international system, as well as the uh, injustice of what it would do on the ground in Kosovo in terms of fomenting a uh, violent uh, jihad and organized crime element in that province and and uh, spelling curtains for the indigenous Serbian Christian population. It's difficult for folks I know to get their minds around all the uh, the, the, the history of this conflict, uh, and and I know it's uh, it's laborious to have to go over it again and again. But we always have new listeners, and we always have folks joining us who really don't know what this is all about. Talk about this long-standing problem and why we so often again seem to come down on the wrong side of the issues. Well, the, the um, I, I don't think your listeners would like me to go back to 1389 when this originally arose in terms of the uh, Ottoman conquest of the Balkan region. Uh, suffice it to say that in 1999, the Clinton administration uh, unleashed an illegal war in Kosovo, by the way, one that was even voted down in the U.S. Congress, but nonetheless was undertaken anyway, uh, on, on the pretext that there was a, uh, a uh, an ethnic cleansing, a cleansing, a genocide being committed against the Albanian Muslim population there, rather than what it was, a response to a very a vicious terrorist um, campaign by the so-called Kosovo Liberation Army. Army. Unfortunately, since that time, under the uh, UN's and uh, NATO's watch, Kosovo has been occupied by the outside powers, and the uh, Albanian Muslims, under the leadership of this terrorist organization, the Kosovo Liberation Army, has been given a virtually free reign there. Now, uh uh, some of the outside powers, starting unfortunately with our country, the United States, wants to compound this error by uh, giving Kosovo its independence against Serbia's wishes and creating uh, what everybody should understand will be a rogue terrorist failed state, Balkans, that would be terribly destabilizing to the entire region. And again, uh, it would simply expand the uh, radical Islamist influence that's already present throughout the region and predominant in such places, am I right, as Albania and, and elsewhere. That, that's right, and also in Bosnia, uh, and which was where our intervention in the Balkans started. And let's not pretend it's not going to hit us here at home. Let's remember that four of the six uh, defendants, Fort Dick's terror plot that we heard about earlier this year were Albanian Muslims from the Kosovo region who have been the uh, beneficiaries of this policy and far from showing the kind of gratitude that some of our policymakers uh, suggested that they would uh, repay us with this kind of terrorist plot. It's the, like the point that uh, Ambassador, uh, excuse me, Admiral Lyons made in his column today. How much uh, gratitude have we gotten from Iraq, for example, for getting rid of their arch enemy Saddam Hussein? And, uh, again, the waters, of course, back during the, uh, in the NATO-led invasion, which is an oxymoron in terms of NATO's purpose, as far as I'm concerned, 
uh, but its invasion with U.S.-led uh, leadership, uh, as you as you provide as you've indicated under uh, Mr. Clinton, uh, the, the whole issue was muddied by uh, arguing that Slobodan Milosevic was such a heinous man that uh, he, that we had to do something about him. Yes, that's right, and that's part of the uh, justification given today uh, with respect to Kosovo independence. Saying, well, how can you expect the Albanians to live in the same country that serves, given what they suffered? And aside from how that was portrayed propagandistically and and uh, I think woefully inaccurately, nobody would make the same argument, for example, with respect to the Kurds in Iraq, who obviously suffered far, far worse under Saddam Hussein, but nobody says... Well, let's give them their independence and, and never mind what the repercussions will be in the region, how destabilizing they'll be, how we'll de uh, uh, cause war in other states. People look at the geopolitical realities and the moral realities and say, wait a minute, this would be a bad move. But they're not doing that on Kosovo, where unfortunately the Bush administration has continued uh, verbatim the Clinton administration's policy. Let's take a quick call. I believe it's Boba, is it, in Ottawa, Canada, who is obviously listening online. And uh, thank you for joining us. Do you have a question? Good evening, Don, and good evening, Mr. Jatsis. Uh, why would uh, the United States support Albanian jihadists and terrorists against the Christian Serbs uh, and, and go against its own foreign policy that has a war against terror at its core? alluded to earlier, as stated by, for example, uh, Chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, Tom Lantus, who, by the way, today announced that he was uh, retiring, is that uh, they, some people in our government believe they can cultivate the goodwill among jihadists across the globe by being able to say, see, we're supporting Muslims here in Kosovo. So I think that's one justification and one that obviously makes no sense to anybody who's familiar with jihad ideology. I think part of it is, too, that some of the officials at the State Department cut their eye teeth in the Balkans under uh, the uh, leadership of Mr. Holbrook and former Secretary Albright, and for them, this has become a personal matter that they need to vindicate the policies that they have been pursuing for the last decade by reaching the final step and letting the final shoe drop, which would be independence for Kosovo. Do you have a follow-up to that, uh, Boba? Well, I would just, uh, <laughs> I'm curious, how do we get rabbis and other Christians in the United States to listen to the Serbian pleas for help against Albanian terror? Because it's uh, a terrorism there, and... It, it certainly is, and I think uh, I think the first thing is we have to tell people in the United States that not not from Serbia's point of view or from America's point of view or the coast of Albanians' point of view, but from America's point of view, this is bad for our own policy in terms of the security of, of the Western world, security of the United States and, and our friends in Europe against this uh, jihadist threat, which does exist. Serbia and Kosovo should not be an exception to what our overall policy against uh, the global jihad is. We're talking about Kosovo. We're talking about a pending decision, a train wreck in the making, if you will, as we're being warned by informed people regarding it. The United States said it is prepared to recognize Kosovo as apparently as early as next month. The, United, uh, the uh, UN supervised Albanian Muslim administration of the Serbian province in Kosovo is going to make a unilateral declaration of independence from Serbia. And uh, among those commenting, of course, we've cited briefly by James Lyon, U.S. Navy retired admiral. He was commander in chief of the U.S. Pacific Fleet, senior U.S. military representative to the UN, and deputy chief of naval operations. Uh, among many other things, and uh, he says, from a strategic viewpoint, we are endorsing formation of a Taliban-like state in the very heart of Europe. And he says it's difficult to see what advantages exist for the U.S. to force a resolution for Kosovo, especially one that threatens to unleash instability in the troubled region, as well as a broader political showdown with Russia and China, too. <laughs> Ambassador James Bissett also joins us right now, along with Jim Jackers. Jim, as we said, is the director of the American Council for Kosovo. Their website is SaveKosovo.org. And Ambassador Bissett uh, has served, among many other capacities, as Canadian ambassador to uh, the region, uh, specifically Bulgaria and Albania. Uh, in uh, 1990, he was appointed to that post, and uh, we are honored to have him back with us again. Ambassador, thank you for taking time to be here today. Uh, not at all. I think this is a very important subject that I'm delighted that you've invited me on the program. Well, and Jim has agreed to stay with us as well, and I know you're both longtime friends and uh, share this great concern and this issue. Uh, Ambassador, since we've already gotten some comments from Jim, uh, share with us your own concerns as to why this really is a train wreck in the making for the United States especially. <laughs> 